welcome to uh, Word Out Community Channel, YouTube for refugees and immigrants in Chicago. Uh, my name is Emma Iaka. Uh, I've been in the pipeline of resettlement from Kenya. Now I'm resettled in, in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, but I have my YouTube channel that focuses mostly on information events like this promoting our businesses alliance for refugees in, in Chicago. And uh, today it happened that I'm in, in Geneva. I, I was lucky that I was part of this and um, I was looking forward to engage more with the individuals who have been in the process of planning this. Um, so first and foremost, I will welcome you on our show. It's a pleasure to have you and thank you for making the time to do this. Of course. I know it is very busy. It's very busy time, but I'm so excited that you you were able to make time for us. Uh, so I will start to us about yourself and what you do, your role, yes. and where you are you are operating from. Uh, my name is Parveen Ali. I, I'm a senior policy advisor at UNHCR, um, working with the Assistant High Commissioner for Protection. Uh, and I'm heading the team, it's called the Global Compact on Refugees Coordination Team at headquarters that is responsible for supporting the Assistant High Commissioner in her oversight of all the work related to the Global Compact across the organization. And relate, part of that work is, uh, is preparing and organizing this big Global Refugee Forum every four years. So this has been our primary focus for quite a while now. <laughs> how, how is that has been with the planning for this year? It's been a great process. We were very fortunate this time around, um, having a little bit of extra time to plan. We've been planning this really full on since 2021 when we had the high level officials meeting to take stock of progress on the compact. Um, so we've had about two years to prepare. And when we prepared the first Global Refugee Forum in 2019, it was less than a year, uh, basically, after the Global Compact was affirmed. So we had very little time to pull everything together. And mm. we, I think, have now, um, we, but with that first forum, I think we now have a really good base of support with so many different stakeholder groups involved, you know, refugees and NGOs and development partners and the private sector and mayors and faith leaders and media and so many other groups who have all kind of come together since that first forum and really helped to co-shape this, this uh, forum uh, together. Um, and so it's been quite a process, but uh, it's, been, it's been a longer one. And we've had the benefit of time and we've had the benefit of so many different groups engaged in helping us to make it a success. Great, great. So my audience, mostly are refugees and yes. individuals who are always looking to support and engage with refugees on grassroots. Yes. Uh, they are so much interested in learning and understanding what is uh, GRF uh, all about. Like, yes. What does that mean? Yes. to them because they don't know we are up here and we don't know what's, <laughs> what's going on yeah. the global refugee forum is the world's largest gathering on refugees ever mm -hmm. uh, it's the second one we've had since the global compact was affirmed um, the global compact on refugees really is about two things one is i think it is about recognizing that the majority of the world's refugees are living in countries that are considered lower middle income countries okay. uh, and you know dealing facing enormous economic and social strains um, that are linked to that and it was a recognition that these countries need the solidarity and support and engagement of the international community for taking on this responsibility of hosting and protecting refugees. So this is the first, is to really recognize the importance of that kind of solidarity that is needed to ensure that refugees can be protected and included and assisted wherever they're living. The second is really uh, a new thing in many ways, although many of the different stakeholder groups I mentioned have been involved in uh, refugee matters for many, many years. Uh, this was the first recognition, really, that everyone has their, a role to play and that we're all much more effective if we work together to achieve a common goal. 
we can do so much more together than what we can do on our own. And the Global Refugee Forum is an opportunity to put that into practice. I see. Um, what role can UNHCR play in engaging refugees who are currently in the camps? How can we make this process more accessible? Right mm -hmm. now for us, we're here, but yeah. Yes, this is a really good question. And it's one I think that has, we've been grappling with in, in many ways. But you know, the UNHCR uh, as an organization has a community-based protection approach, and which we've had for many, many years in the way that we work. So we already have been working very closely with refugee communities, whether they're living in camps or living in cities, in urban areas, uh, in consulting and advising and helping us to design programs and policies. Uh, that are meaningful and helpful for for the for these groups. So it wasn't a small leap then to then think about okay, how can we use this model and and use it to inform the preparation of the Global Refugee Forum. So many of the of the refugees that uh, we engage with normally uh, and the leaders in the communities that we normally work with uh, in all of our operations around the world. Of course, we're the, amongst the first to step up and really contribute and share their views uh, and ideas and thoughts for what we need to include and focus on for this forum. And what we're trying to do now is find a way to make that a bit more um, clear and to strengthen that process and enable that kind of communication over the long term. Because I think that refugees, they, I mean, I think refugees that we work with not only help us to identify our priorities, and help us to develop our programs and to develop pledges for the Global Refugee Forum, but are also ultimately the people that we are accountable to. So they help keep everybody on their feet and ensure that everyone is living up to their commitments. So I envision and would very much hope that refugees from camps to cities to those working in global policy environments uh, are all helping us to keep our feet to the fire and play a role in the follow-up process. We are here. And, yes. and we are trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what is other avenues has been established during this forum apart from resettlement that will increase refugee protection in the world? Oh, many things. <laughs> so we were just, uh, before this interview, we were just looking at a bit of a wrap-up of what's come out of the past three days at the Global Refugee Forum, and it's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many commitments around scholarship opportunities for refugees, uh, labor mobility and labor pathways, employment opportunities that have been committed, resettlement, family reunification commitments that came out, and, you know, unblocking some of the obstacles to family reunification. Um, there's really been an incredible range of um, opportunities that have been pledged from the private sector, from universities, from schools, from development banks. It's really, it's been really very encouraging. Uh, and on top of that, of course, uh, you know, part of protection is also ensuring that people can access the systems and services that they need. So there have been very, very good pledges around ensuring that people have access to asylum, that they have the proper documentation, that they are included in education systems, in healthcare systems, and social protection. It's really, really quite incredible. We saw this with the economic inclusion and social protection pledge that was announced uh, with significant support. Uh, we've seen this in the, in the health systems inclusion, financing for inclusive education, and many others. So we're really excited about that. Great. What can you tell or give hopes to refugees down there struggling to get protection? I'm thinking about hope. Yes. What do you think we should do to give them hope so that they can continue being patient with the system that is going to be implemented <laughs> moving forward? Oh, this is a really good question. I mean, I think hope is what keeps us going. It's what keeps us alive. It's what is represented here at the Global Refugee Forum. And I think this kind of solidarity that is shown through the pledging process in the Global Refugee Forum, through the engagement that we've been, you know, all of the work that we've been doing over the past two years are the kind of levers of keeping hope alive, right? And I think the more that we continue to push this whole of society approach 
and really continue to push this message that, you know, it's not about waiting for a system to change, but actually, you know, coming together with other actors and figuring out how to make it work. This is what gives us hope, is being able to be active in uh, making these changes. Okay. Do you think in the long run, politics has affected the refugee narrative, leading to high crisis and, and, and welcoming environment. Absolutely. I think politics, refugees, people become refugees as a result of political crises. So, I mean, it's inextricably interlinked. <laughs> There's no way you can, you can delink those things. I think, though, what is new and exciting about the Global Compact is that it offers a way for us to think about refugee situations in a way that doesn't have to be a crisis. If we have the right policies in place, we have the right tools in place, we have the right systems with the right people working in them, the right actors at the table, a crisis doesn't have to become a crisis. It can be a manageable situation. And beyond that, we can really start changing and thinking about how the narrative can shift. Because once a situation is manageable, then you can focus on what can we do to include people, to show what people bring with them when they, when they arrive in a new community. What are the skills? What do they have to offer? How do they contribute to these communities if they're supported in doing so? And this is really, I think, uh, ultimately what we need to focus on. Uh, yeah. Um, I've, I've been here and I've been hearing so much about uh, refugee inclusive and participation engagement. Uh, what does that mean to UNHCR specifically? <laughs> what does refugee participation mean? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's exactly what it says in the Global Compact, that refugees uh, have to be at the center of decisions that are made that affect their lives. And so these are decisions at the micro level, at the very personal individual level, up to the policy level. Mm. And it's about putting refugees at the center and ensuring that Refugees are, you know, with us in defining our, the priorities, the, the work ahead, what it is we need to develop and focus on, uh, and, and how we need to be accountable. Yes. Wow. Like, you know, we are talking about there are some communities left out, and when I look at it, I'm picturing resettlement organizations mm -hmm. on Russia. Mm -hmm. I did not see many of them. I've seen most of refugee-led organizations, mm. right, and partners, but resettlement organizations on the grassroots, I haven't seen them on this space as many as I would expect it. And because they know what's happening, they know the resources they have is limited, they know um, the hardships that the mm. newer refugees, they are, they are, they are settling, what, what's happening and what could be done to help them thrive. And I don't know the procedures of getting people to a global refugee forum. From grassroots resettlement the, the agencies, organizations? organizations. From I, what kind of organizations are these? So for example, may I work with different organizations on grassroots. Mm -hmm. I have an organization called the Heartland Alliance. You mentioned the Ethiopian mm -hmm. community. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Refugee One. Mm -hmm. you know, we have uh, Catholic Charity. Mm -hmm. We have World Relief. We have a lot of yes. these organizations mm -hmm. of grassroots, but I, they have like thousands of refugees that they are settling, mm -hmm. and they have also their concerns that they really bring on global mm -hmm. space, but I think they are not much involved mm -hmm. into this participation. How can we get them into the space so that mm -hmm. they can, their voices can also mm -hmm. be heard? This is a really interesting question, I and mean, resettlement is a, is a very, um, challenging space to work in because we don't have that many spaces, but yeah. the need is so much higher right. than what's available. Um, and I think institutions and governments who are doing resettlement um, work to understand what the protection needs are um, in the communities and to see how best to respond and whether resettlement makes sense as a, as a solution. I think maybe, you know, it's, it's challenging for many reasons, of course, for many grassroots organizations to engage in these big global policy processes. But what I really hope is something like the pledges and the pledging process that was developed for the forum could be maybe a mechanism, because we do have 
you know, we do have the resettlement pledge and the commitment to resettle a million refugees by 2030. And this isn't just a state pledge, right? This is a pledge that includes contributions by local communities and local actors. In many ways, we have community, private community sponsorship, but we also have all the actors that are needed, like the local grassroots organizations, NGOs, and others that play a role in the resettlement process to make the system work. Mm. So maybe that could be an interesting space and an opportunity to engage, and it would be worth raising this, I think, with that group to see how they could be a part of that conversation. It's really interesting to hear. Thank you, thank you. Yes. I, I do appreciate it, and I think uh, that's all, all what I have. I don't have any recommendation. <laughs> I think the main recommendation is to just engage. It's to continue to engage. The best way to keep hope alive, as I said, is to participate and engage and come to the come to the forum, come to the table with ideas. I think some of the most innovative uh, pledges and contributions that have been made over the past three days at the forum, we've heard from refugees and refugee-led groups. And so this is really clearly where the innovation is at. And I think it's it's so interesting. I've heard from so many governments and other organizations that participating over the past three days, how the presence of more than 300 refugees at the forum uh, this year has totally transformed their experience at the forum and brought these events, all the different events, the private ones, the public ones, the ones here in the forum, the ones held in Geneva, they really brought them alive and made them really meaningful. And I've heard this across the board repeatedly over the past three days. So we were really, right. really That's encouraged by that. Thank you very much. I really Thank appreciate you so much. It. I appreciate your time. Of course. Thank, thank you very you. much.